All right, everyone. So in this lecture, let's start by creating our digital ocean droplet or virtual machine and install cPanel on it. The first thing you have to do is open digitalocean.com and create an account if you haven't done this before. If you have an account, just log in. And this is my case, I will log into my account to create a new droplet or machine. So here I am, this is my account. And let's create a new droplet. Create droplets. CPanel does not work on Ubuntu, so you have to install it on CentOS. I will select 7.5 x64 architecture. It's good. And here you have to select your options. I will select this 2 gigabyte one virtual CPU droplet. It's okay for me for now. And let's select the data center region. I will select London. And that's it. You can add an SSH key for authentication. It's not our concern for now. Just create our machine. I will name it panel.h-ly.me, which is my domain name. In GoDaddy, you can see this is my domain name, h-y.me. Okay, just click create now, and our machine will be created in several seconds. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, as you can see, this is my droplet is created and this is my IP address. Now I will access this machine using SSH protocol. So let's copy this IP address and I will open the PuTTY application to connect to this server. Just write your IP address here and click open. Click yes and here we are. And the default username is root and the password will be sent to your email address. So this is my email, you can see this digital ocean, and this is my IP address, this route, and this is the password, I will copy it, and paste it here, and it will immediately ask you to reset your password. So enter the current password, then enter your new password for this machine. Retype it again, and here we are. We are logged in to our CentOS machine. We are ready now to install cPanel. So let's start together. The first thing you have to do is to ensure that Perl is installed in this machine. So I run the command sudo yum install run the command and wait for Perl to be installed. It will ask you to install and download the files. Just click Y for yes and install it. Yes, again. And very nice. It's stalling. It's very simple. Very nice. It's completed. Now, the second thing we have to do is to set a host name for this machine. My host name, if you remember, is panel. My domain name, hly.me. So simply write host name panel.h ly.me this is my host name or the fully qualified domain name all right these were the prerequisites for installing cpanel now we are ready to install cpanel simply run the command sudo yum install screen wget we will install screen and wget for cpanel to work then let's run the screen command don't worry about the comments, I will put them all in the description attached to this lecture. So you can get them, copy and paste them and run your installation easily. Now we are ready to install cPanel. We have mainly two versions of cPanel. The DNS only version which is free and we don't need it now, we, we need the full version. So you have to run the full version installation which is wget and get your cPanel installation from the cPanel website dash latest run the command and now we have the installation and we can run it so run the command as sh latest and here we are the installation will start i think the idea is very simple it's just a bunch of commands you can run on your machine to install cPanel the main work will be inside cPanel where you are going to configure emails and options like security and so on 
Now it's a simple installation, a step-by-step -step guide. It's very easy to follow and install it in your own environment. Now just wait, it will take some minutes to finish. I will keep the setup running and pause the video, so not to waste your time. All right, friends. As you can see, the installation is finished after about 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Now we are ready to connect and browse our cPanel from our web browser. To do this, we grab the IP address of our machine and put it in our browser and be sure to use HTTPS protocol before entering your IP address. It will not work in HTTP only. And we have now two ports. The 2087 to access the main web administration or the web hosting manager interface for cPanel, which is the admin panel if you want. And we have the other address, which is, or the other port, which is 2083, which is the account login. Of course, we have no accounts yet. We are going to create one from the manager and then log into our cPanel account. But that's enough for now. We have created our cPanel server and we are ready to add domains, configure hosting and websites, configure our emails, and so on. And this is what we are going to see in other lectures. Thank you for following and see you next.